Hi, it's State Rep. Tom Morrison. We are wrapping up another week down here in Springfield. Governor Pritzker finally revealed his initial proposal for progressive income tax rates for the state of Illinois. What the governor is suggesting and or proposing would be a change to our state's constitution to allow for graduated rates. And so I have a guest with me uh, today. He is Andrew Nelms. He's the state director of Americans for Prosperity. Thanks for having me, Tom. Yeah. And so um, were you surprised at the, uh, at the proposed rates so far? I mean, or is this about what you anticipated? I think it's a little bit of a, a mixed bag. Uh, it certainly uh, creates uh, an interesting headline for them to be able to say that uh, under their plan, using their math, 97% uh, of Illinois taxpayers uh, would pay less. But uh, ultimately, one of our main concerns is the notion of a graduated income tax generally. Under a flat tax, everybody pays the same proportion of their income. Right. And so if you earn 20 times more than me, you're going to pay 20 times more in tax. Correct. And to me, that sounds fair. Giving uh, politicians greater ability to levy uh, higher rates to add brackets and to reduce the thresholds at which higher rates apply uh, makes me very nervous. And I think it should make uh, all Illinois taxpayers nervous because I do not believe that our chronically, fiscally irresponsible legislature, present company excluded, right. deserves uh, carte blanche ability to, uh, to, to, uh, levy, to levy more taxes. Right. I've been in the legislature now for a few terms. I've seen the tax rates go up twice. and. Um, it is a real fight to raise taxes because, as you said, as it the, should be. Yeah, as it should be, Andrew, because people back home want to know, well, how are you going to spend that money? Are you actually being responsible with that money or not? Or are you just continuing, uh, you know, the status quo on spending? If we open this door, really there's no check on how high tax rates could go into the future, correct? correct. None so, whatsoever. It should give legislators pause. Uh, before raising taxes. Uh, but again, this greater ability to all of a sudden say, well, I think that this group of people, as defined by any member of the legislature, ought to pay more, uh, is, is, is disconcerting. And as you mentioned, we've had two massive tax hikes in the last decade. Yeah. Uh, over the course of the temporary income tax uh, that went into effect in 2011, Illinois taxpayers forfeited an additional net $38 billion in taxes over what they would have paid otherwise. With the extra $38 billion that the state has received, look at our unpaid bills. Our unpaid bills are still uh, you know, in the double digits in, right. in, in terms of billions of dollars. Um, our unfunded pension liabilities continue to climb. And so that's the frustration that I'm hearing from people back home is that there, there is no real uh, Appetite. I mean, I've been very vocal about our need for pension reform, uh, for reform on how we spend our money. Yeah, that means making cuts, making hard cuts or uh, hard choices or making policy shifts that would give our local governments greater flexibility so right. that they actually could reduce property taxes or at least limit the growth of them on an annual basis. But it just seems like the appetite of this governor and, and his supporters are just to raise taxes and not will make really make reforms or cuts. You hit on a key point there uh, when you mentioned property taxes because the governor's plan does provide a very meager property tax credit uh, to homeowners uh, and I think that if uh, if you have uh, for a family making $61,000 it's a $20 property tax credit. The trouble with the tax credit is that it, it doesn't address the underlying issue of how Correct. much money is being extended in property taxes. Uh, and so you're absolutely right. There is zero reform uh, in this proposal, and I could be wrong, but I don't know that any reform has been proposed in any other form uh, by the administration. Uh, the answer is just more money. Uh, with the income tax, the answer more is money, more money. With, or the, with borrowing, the bag tax, or, yeah, the answer yeah. is more yeah, money. Yeah. In the gas tax, the answer is more money. And the litany goes on and on. And as a beleaguered Illinois taxpayer, the folks watching this video, your constituents, are all very sympathetic to that, I'm sure, uh, and they're very frustrated by it. And so merely granting Springfield politicians greater authority to levy higher taxes is the solution to our problems. The fight is going to be over whether or not to amend the state constitution. That involves the legislature, and then it also involves you, the voters, back at home. You would have to approve changing the Constitution to even allow this proposal to go forward. So we're, the reason why this debate's happening right now is because it's going to be many, many months, even a couple of right. years 
of debating this issue. I'm concerned about uh, the effect on the overall Illinois economy, um, the attractiveness. I mean, in the, in the governor's press conference, he himself said that people are fleeing Illinois. Really what they're asking voters to do is, uh, is receive a very modest short-term tax cut in exchange for a blank check. That is a good way because of putting it, yeah. Because I think that, and, you know, I certainly could be wrong, but I think that very quickly we would begin to see those rates increase because the governor is suggesting that his proposal uh, would, would bring in about $3.4 billion in new revenue to the state. But we know that $3.4 billion isn't the number that they want. The number that they want is really more than double that. Right. His campaign and... and the speech he gave on the House floor talks about increases of spending on new programs and such. Where's the money going to come from again when we already have the debt, the unfunded liabilities? Uh, the math isn't going to work. Well, Andrew, thanks again for joining me. I appreciate your work down here in the Capitol. Thank you very and, much. And Tom. back at home, too. And uh, for you, the viewers, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Thank you.